Hello, and welcome to the channel. Today, we're going to be taking a look at my custom Half-Life minifigures and weapons. Now, it's been about 9 months since I've done a video entirely dedicated to custom minifigures, so let's get right into this. I'm going to be starting taking a look at the minifigures, then moving on to the weapons, and at the very end I'll show you a how-to on most of the weapons that I can actually show you how to build. Starting with the star of the show, we have Gordon Freeman. Now I have already shown this figure out on the channel, but I have made a couple of changes to him. First of all, I hit the whole figure of the clear coat, so as you can see the suit is very shiny. Now the paint won't just come off, which is very nice. I also updated the face, as the original face I made, as you can see, uh, didn't look too great, and it was just this woman's face from Ghostbusters. So yeah, it did not very much match Gordon Freeman's. But other than that, it's basically unchanged. He still has the clips on the back to hold weapons. This is the same crowbar that I had in that video. But yeah, I do think it's a very good figure. I love the detailing I have on the sides of the arms and the legs with the metallic and all the black and how it's basically symmetrical. It's kind of hard to make. The only thing about this figure that I don't really like, along with the other groups of minifigures that I have, is those are all from Half-Life 2, but this suit is based off the Half-Life 1 HEV suit. So it does look a bit out of place with how bulky it is compared to the slimmer Half-Life 2 suit. But other than that, I do think it just looks really good in general, especially the new face that I made with the glasses that I painted on. I think that looks pretty good. Next up is my Alex Vance figure. Now this is the only one that doesn't have any clear coat, as you can see, because I made this printed out torso. I like the detail of it, like the uh, Lambda Complex kind of Black Mesa logo right there as well as these kind of, I don't know, bandages or whatever that she has on the side of right there in the game. She also has the half sleeves that are also just these printed out tan parts that I wrapped around right there. Now I am going to link the image file down below for anyone who wants to print out this torso piece. And uh, before you do, you might have to color it differently because of just how your printer works uh, and scale it up. I do not, I just kind of guessed the scale on this and it ended up working. So yeah, to, however your printer works or whatever you're using to do it, I use Google Docs, uh, it's going to depend, but this is going to be in the description. Other than that, she has the pretty simple jeans with just the one stitch part and this belt that kind of curves like it does in the game, which was kind of hard to do, so I didn't want to add detail to it in case of ruining it. She has this pretty simple pistol, and going up you have the hair, which was the probably the hardest part of the figure because she has this very specific hair in-game. So I took this hair piece, which I think was originally an Anakin Skywalker hair piece, and I sanded down this part on the front and painted that as the headband, as you can see. And I think it works really well for the hair that she has in the game, that kind of short hair she has that's put back. And then yeah, the only other detail here is these shoes that I have at the bottom and this very simple Lego gun that I use for basically all the Half-Life figures because it really matches. Only other accessory I have for her is this wrench, which you can see her with in some of the promotional photos for the game. And yeah. Next up, I have two figures, which is my head crab and head crab zombie. Now, the head crab doesn't really classify as a figure, but I'm still just going to take a closer look at it. As you can see, it's made from a droid body, which has that right here. Now, this one was built upside down. If I take the one off of my head crab zombie, you can see I'll usually have it like that on the bottom, but on this one I have that stud so you can attach it to a clear piece to make it look like it's jumping. Now the difference between this one and one that is actually on the head is on this one the legs are inverted inward on each side, while it's outward here if they're just standing. Now I do really like how this one turned out, um, like some of the pieces I used, like this is a battle droid claw that I split in half. There's a lot of battle droid pieces all along here that make up the head crab. And I think it looks really good. One thing I don't really like about this one that's on the head of the head crab zombie is that I painted this a flesh tone because I didn't have another tan piece to use there. And while it does match the game better, I just don't think it really works as well as the tan on top of the head crab. But speaking of the head crab zombie, if I put this back on, you can see how it looks complete. Now, here is it next to my original head crab zombie from Half-Life 1. Now it's up to you uh, which one you like better. As you can see the head crab on this one is definitely a lot bigger than this one as a normal Lego minifigure head is just really big and I think it would look better for minifigure scaling. But in terms of scaling in Half-Life 
I think this one just looks closer to the game. But this one also did not have any back legs, so, you know. But this one, as you can see, it's the standard headcrab zombie from Half-Life 2. It has the claws right there, which are just the normal Lego claws, which I put some flesh, tone, and blood on. And if I take off the head crab one more time, you can see I have this full kind of rib cage and organ section right in there that I actually have stick out just a bit from the figure. So I used hot glue for that. And I think it looks really good. It looks very nice with the figure. As you can see, the head crab does really tie it together. But uh, it's really up to you if you like the bigger head crab look or not. Out of the head crabs, last up is the fast head crab zombie. As you can see in game, it's basically just a skeleton that the head crab has latched onto to turn the person into this kind of skeletal mass with just a bit of muscle on it, which I tried to capture here. Now, one thing I don't really like about this figure is the bones are a bit too yellow. It, the paint I put on looked a lot lighter before it dried, and the clear coat I went over it with also didn't help in that regard. But other than that, I think this figure is pretty well painted, uh, and I like the proportions on it. I couldn't find any claws for its arms, but um, I do think its arms are just long enough as is, as they're the LEGO General Grievous arms that I've painted over with these reds. Now the head crab on this figure is actually different than the normal one, as it is the fast head crab with the longer legs that kind of cross over when it's on a zombie, as well as the fast head crabs having no jaws and a lot more blood up front, and the back legs on this one, as compared to this one, don't actually move, as they have to be stationary for the look they have on the fast head crab zombie, but I don't really mind that because I don't really see myself taking the fast head crab off of this zombie anytime soon. But other than that, it's just a pretty self-explanatory figure, just this skeleton body that I completely covered with some hot glue and some bone kind of coloring, and I think it comes together to make a pretty good looking figure. Last but not least is my Overwatch Combine Soldier. This is not a Civil Protection Unit Soldier, although I would like to make one of those. These guys are a bit bulkier in game and have this very nice camo pattern which I tried to emulate and I think I did a pretty good job on it with the dark gray and sand blue. As you can see he just has some pretty simple detailing other than that on the torso but just those black lines right there. I like the legs with the camo on there and these black kind of pads they have right there in game as well as just some pretty simple shoes that go around the figure. Each arm you can see has the white underneath like in game and has these straps going up it with these kind of armor plates along the camo sections of the arm, which you can see I did put camo underneath those, and these kind of orangish symbols on each side of the arm, and these straps do extend underneath there. Moving upwards, you can see you have the face, and this part is just a binocular piece, the end of one, that I kind of split and put along there, as you can see. And other than that, it's a helmet that I cut up right there, and I just have those pretty simple goggles. Now the one thing I don't like about this face is the fact that I put way too much clear coat on this guy. So like he can't bend down and this face cannot turn nor be taken off, which is kind of, you know, too bad. So do not use too much clear coat on your figures. But other than that, he works pretty well. The two guns you could probably use for him is the kind of machine gun they have in the game and the Overwatch standard pulse rifle. Those two work pretty well, so speaking of those, let's get on to the weapons. Starting off, I'm going to show you the very simple weapons that you don't actually even need to build. They're just what I recommend for using as Half-Life weapons in this case. First off, you have obviously the Lego crowbar piece. Uh, the only way you can make this really better is by painting both sides like I have, but you can also just leave it as the red Lego piece and that will work just fine. For Alex, you just have the wrench that I talked about earlier, nothing too much about that. Another weapon that I have that I have not shown off yet is the kind of theropod or bug bait that they have in game. Now I've found that a pretty simple like a cake piece does the job for this really well. Uh, and yeah, it just works, it's not too uh, crazy of a piece. Last but not least, you have the two standard pistols of the game. That being the .735 Magnum, I think it is, and the standard pistol you carry around throughout the game. Now, the Magnum is just a very simple LEGO pistol, nothing too much about that. But with this pistol, 
I think it works better for Gordon's case in gray. Uh, I don't know, just the dark gray I think works a lot better for the gray top of the weapon in game. But these are rarer than just the normal black variant, which also work very well. Now, moving on, I have two weapons that are quite simple to build. They only take two or three pieces. First off being the shotgun that Gordon uses in game. This is very simple, self-explanatory. You just take one of these kind of blaster pieces and attach just one of these binocular pieces onto the end. And you have the Half-Life shotgun. It pretty well replicates its kind of double barrels and its thickness in game and fits really well into a figure's hand and, in terms of Gordon, goes really well onto the clips on the back. The only other one, like this, is the submachine gun they have. I'm pretty sure it's an MP4 in-game. I'm not much of a gun guy, so I don't really know. This is made up of one of these telescope pieces, a black pistol, not the same pistol that I showed you earlier. This is a Star Wars blaster as compared to just this one. You stick that on there, and then all that's left is a black minifigure hand for the magazine pointed inward. And yeah, that looks pretty good, especially with the Overwatch soldier. If I can pose that in his hand really quick. Looks like that. Now, I do have an alternate build in case you don't have the telescope piece. It is just one of these longer Star Wars blaster rifles with another minifigure hand. But the thing that's most important about this gun is the magazine is very close to the end of the gun, even though I think this build does look better for it. To make this gun, start with one of these LEGO sniper rifle pieces from the LEGO Star Wars line, and attach a clip right to the back of it to add to like the bulkiness of the gun in-game. Now this next assembly is pretty nice looking for the gun. First, you take two clips and attach them like this, and you put them on the gun so the other clip faces this way, like that. Then you take one of these Lego arm pieces, these bulky ones, and you take it and you put this end right on this clip right here, just like that. See, so if I turn around to this side, it's kind of curving around to make that shape around the barrel in the game that that has. Then, take one of these small Lego bar pieces and attach it to the top of that, just like that, and this works as the second barrel for the gun. Then you take the only modified piece here, which is one of these pieces with the end cut off, and you stick it right on there to make the Overwatch standard issue pulse rifle. Now you can just not modify this piece. In my opinion, it makes it a bit too long for what it looks like in-game. But I do think this looks pretty good, and if I put it in the hand of the Combine Soldier, as you can see, it looks pretty nice. It's not too uh, big. It's a bit oversized looking, but that's the best I could do in LEGO. Now last, but definitely not least, is the most iconic weapon from the Half-Life series of games, and that is the Gravity Gun. So to start on this gun, you're going to take one of these headlight brick pieces, and then one of these studs with a hole in the center, and you're going to stick it right there. Then you're going to take a pistol piece and put the handle part directly inward like that. Then one of these pieces with a small bar coming out of it. I like using brown, it's the most accurate for the game, but black will also work in this case. Next, on this side, take one of these pieces with the stud connection on the end and shove it into the gun, and then a dark gray circular tile, and put it right there on that connection. As you can see, that makes the main base of the gun. Next, you can take either a blue or a neon orange, depending on which section of the game you're doing. I prefer neon orange, but I will show you what the gun looks like with blue kind of at the end of this. Stick that right there on the end. And then next, take a Lego, uh, another stud with a hole in the center of it, just like that, and then the grappling hook piece, and stick it right in there with one of the things pointing right kind of down the center of the gun. And then now you're going to take 
some gray hands. Now, the thing about this is they're going to have to be a bit squashed. Those are a bit less um, big than normal enough minifigure hand to hold onto the grappling hook. But you just slide them down onto it like that on each side. And with that done, you have the gravity gun from Half-Life 2. As you can see, I think this looks very good. It has the three prongs. It's pretty accurate to the game. And it's somewhat minifigure size. It's the least bulky. I could get it looking and still look pretty good for a minifigure. And yeah, I think it looks really nice. And here is it with the blue center from around the end of the game. It also looks pretty good, but just not as recognizable in my opinion as the orange center. Last up for weapons is one I can't show you how to build, and that is the Overwatch crossbow. As you can see, it is a normal LEGO crossbow piece that I have heavily modified. You have a scope right up here, which is just a LEGO blaster scope, as well as one of these pieces that you use to rest this thing against your shoulder. And the battery down here that heats up the rebar that gets shot out the crossbow. The rebar is just one of these really simple LEGO antenna pieces that I cut up for this. And yeah, the rest of this is just pretty simple LEGO pieces. This is half of a one by one um, smooth tile. And yeah, I think this looks really good if I put it in Gordon's hands really quick. You can see that it looks very nice with the figure, and I'm immensely happy with how this turned out. This is probably my favorite accessory that I made. Now, the last two things I have made for this aren't weapons, but just simply accessories, and they are two of these kind of health pickups you have in the game. The first one is pretty simple. It's just a normal LEGO green canister that I attached this white piece to which is the center of a like a white grill piece that I cut out and just put that little medical plus on. The other one is one of the larger health pickups in game. As you can see, it's pretty simple. Uh, the only modified part is this, which is where I hot glued a uh, one by one plate to the back of one of those. But as you can see, it works very well for how the health pickup looks in game. And I think they both look really good. Anyways, thank you for watching until the very end of this video. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a like, and other than that, I'll be coming out with one more Stranger Things mock next week, and then probably a Necker review sometime after that. Anyways, bye!